This is the Glock 17. It has never won any beauty awards, and maybe that's because the engineer who developed it was not only Austrian, but originally designed curtain rods and knives for the Austrian military. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the history and development of the Glock. While Gasson Glock did design curtain rods, it was in 1974 that his small shop of only 12 employees was able to secure a government contract to produce field knives for the Austrian military. The knives utilized newly developed polymers, which were just beginning to emerge in the manufacturing world. The polymer handles proved lighter and tougher than wood and lacked pretty much all the terrible qualities of Bakelite. It was then that Glock learned how to produce quality steel while saving weight using the new age polymers all without sacrificing durability. And in 1979, the Austrian military came back to Glock, requesting that he take part in designing a new service pistol for the military. At the time, the Austrian military was using the P-38 and P-11 as their service pistols, which were really starting to feel their age. Glock asked several soldiers what they wanted in a sidearm. From there, a sketch was made of what the Glock would be. Now this sketch clearly wasn't how the Glock should look, but how it should function. The pistol needed to be lightweight, accurate, safe, and most importantly, reliable. Glock then assembled a small team of engineers and began working on his new pistol. He gathered several competitor pistols to see how they functioned and where they could be improved. The odds were completely against Glock. He would be designing a new pistol from scratch, using new materials on a shoestring budget with a small team all without ever designing a gun before. If Glock was David, then he'd be facing three Goliaths in the firearms industry, including H&K, FN, and Browning, all who had a lifetime of research and development under their belts. Interestingly, Glock opted not to have an external safety because he felt that it was dangerous. He believed that under stress, a person may not remember to disable the safety. The point was sadly proved in the early 80s when a police department switched from revolvers to semi-automatic pistols. One police officer lost his life when he failed to disable the pistol's safety and was fatally shot. The pistol needed to be absolutely safe for the user. Accidental discharges from dropping or the trigger catching a holster were completely unacceptable to Glock. In 1981, Glock produced the Model 17 after only a year's worth of research, design, and development, which is remarkable for any company, but especially so considering Glock was 52 at the time and had never designed a firearm before the Glock 17. Glock designed a truly revolutionary pistol which was lighter and more reliable than anything before it, and it would have to be because the Austrian military laid out 17 strict standards that the pistol was to be designed to. The new service pistol was to not exceed 58 parts, or have more than 20 malfunctions during a 10,000 round torture test. The pistol was also to be fired 15,000 times, and then a cartridge that produced twice the maximum allowable pressure was to be loaded and fired. If the pistol failed to fire after that, it was disqualified. The Glock 17 accomplished all of this. It functioned flawlessly during the torture testing. It also only had 38 parts which could be swapped between pistols. And since then, the popularity of the Glock has exploded. It's called the Glock 17. This is my Glock 17 third generation. The original Glock 17. We've got a Gen 3 Glock 17. Well, you know, I'm amazed. I mean, are you all amazed? I'm pretty impressed with the way the Glock performed and I would not hesitate carrying the gun every day. It is amazing, and there are very few guns to stack up. A Glock is an excellent service pistol. And the reliability of it, I couldn't ignore that. They're very accurate, they're extremely reliable, they're ugly as hell. The history of the Glock's development is nothing short of an underdog story. The only question is, can Glock ever really improve on Glock perfection? <laughs>